Hey guys, I'm back and I am gonna talk to you guys about refeeding syndrome today. But before I do so, please subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. And then you can see future videos like this one. So refeeding syndrome is something that I have found to not be very widely talked about or recognized, but it's such a huge part of recovery for a lot of people. It's a lot more common than people usually think it is. Refeeding syndrome is brought on by going from a period of prolonged malnourishment to eating a more normal amount of food. I'm going to share some of the main symptoms, though if you are going through this or you're planning to go to treatment and will be going through this, the symptoms might be different for you. The first one is water and electrolyte imbalances. So when I was going to treatment, they tracked exactly how much water we were drinking each day and they made us pee in a hat. And that was basically just a plastic bowl that they put in the toilet that you had to pee into. And they did this so they could measure how much fluid you were taking in versus how much you were losing. And they called this your ins and outs. When you're going through refeeding, sometimes your body will try to conserve water. And it does this to protect you in a way because it doesn't know if you're going to neglect it again. And this can be super dangerous. It can cause water to build up in your lungs and it can also cause disturbances with your potassium, your phosphorus, your sodium, many different electrolytes. And that's not good, my friends. This symptom leads to the next symptom that I'm going to be talking about, which is edema. Edema is caused by water retention, and this can cause your ankles and feet to swell dramatically. And sometimes there's pitting involved too, which is basically just where you like press on your ankle or your foot and a little pit forms instead of your skin just bouncing back immediately. What a lot of people don't know is that this can occur for over a year after treatment. And I just barely found that out myself because I still get edema. In treatment, they do a lung and edema check every night before you go to bed. And if you have edema, what they do to treat this is they give you compression socks and they also give you lots of Gatorade. And they do this for a lot of other issues that can occur from refeeding as well, the Gatorade part. I'm not necessarily sure what they do if you have water in your lungs because I luckily didn't have that issue. But if that does happen to you, then they'll know how to address it. If you're going to treatment, refeeding can be dangerous to do on your own, I've heard, but don't take it from me because like I've said, I'm not a professional. I just feel like I'm a good person to share this stuff because I've actually been through it. So I know a lot about it and I've been to treatment a couple of times and so it's educated me a lot. Another symptom is cardiac issues. A lot of the time when you have an eating disorder, cardiac problems can occur previously before you even go through refeeding, which luckily I did not have to deal with any cardiac issues prior to going to treatment. But refeeding by itself can cause cardiac problems and it did do that for me. It caused me to have a very accelerated heart rate and caused my heart rate to jump up by a lot when I stand up. And they actually had to send me to the ER for this and I still have issues because of it. But it can also cause your heart rate to lower which is more normal for eating disorders. The fourth symptom that I'm going to be talking to you guys about today is hot flashes. And I also luckily did not have to go through this, but I knew a lot of people who did. It basically just causes your body to randomly overheat dramatically. And this happened to most people at night that I was at treatment with. And I shouldn't say that I didn't get it at all because I actually did get this just after I left treatment. Which brings me to another thing. You can get symptoms from refeeding a long time after treatment they can start to show up later on. And I do want to mention that most of these symptoms do go away over time. They don't last forever most of the time, um, so don't be super worried. And I also am not saying this stuff to tell you guys not to go to treatment, to not go through the refeeding process, because I promise that the refeeding process is gonna be a lot better for your body than neglecting it of what it needs. Another symptom is gastroparesis. Your body can actually forget how to digest food. So if you aren't eating a normal amount of food and then you start eating a normal amount of food or more than that, your body can wig out and just break down. Earlier on in my eating disorder, I would barely eat anything during the weeks and then on the weekend, I would hang out with my friend Gabby and I would start eating one thing and then because of my super black and white mindset would just think screw it and I'd eat a bunch of stuff and my body did not know what to do with this 
and it would freak out and I would just get the most severe pain that I've ever felt in my entire life. I literally felt like someone was just ripping apart my stomach. I'd be up all night throwing up just for hours and it was so excruciating, I couldn't even sleep. It was just a terrible time. The very last time that I was in treatment, I missed a couple of weeks because I developed all of these really weird medical issues and this is while I was on PHP, which is where I just go there for part of the day and come home. Um, and I literally could not eat because of it and my mouth just was in so much pain that it was unbearable to chew or swallow anything, even water, like it burned to swallow water. Once it started getting a little bit better and I was able to eat a little bit more, I ended up having to drive myself to the ER at 2 in the morning, which in hindsight I definitely should have asked someone to take me, but I just tend to be a little bit too independent sometimes. Anyways, I drove myself there because my stomach just destroyed itself. They literally had to give me morphine because I was freaking out so much over how much pain I was in. And they had to keep me there for a while because my blood pressure dropped to like 40 something over like 24, which is like, you're dead blood pressure. Um, and that was all because of gastroparesis, which I would not have developed if it weren't for my eating disorder. And luckily I don't really have to deal with that issue at all now, because the only reason I would be having to deal with it is if I wasn't really eating anything and then I started eating normally again, which I don't do in recovery. So um, if you are in recovery, then that's not something that you're gonna have to deal with long term, unless you have many flare ups, um, which for me doesn't occur often, but again, these kind of issues really vary from person to person. There are so many other symptoms, but these are just some of the main ones that I experienced and that I witnessed others experience when I was in treatment. That's all I have to say, really, when it comes to this topic. But I'm very, very glad that you guys have chosen to watch this video. If you're watching this video right now, you're amazing. I appreciate you. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you all so much. Sayonara, brother.